What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Sunday evening slash night so far. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here. And first off, I want to thank everybody that came by the impromptu live stream that I did earlier on today. During the news, the breaking news that happened that I'll get into in just a little bit. But I want to thank everybody from Unpopular Opinion Sports to Sevi Mizrahi, a.k.a. The Miz, Mitch Kofsky, Adam Costas, a.k.a. AC, and special guest Iceman New York for popping on the live stream today. I appreciate all your guys' support. I appreciate all you guys sticking with me. And I appreciate every single one of you guys coming by the live stream and enjoying the afternoon too. Now I'm here to talk about the main reason I'm doing this video. Obviously, we all know about the breaking news that happened earlier on today. <clears throat> the Brooklyn Nets have officially traded Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is now officially a Dallas Maverick. The Brooklyn Nets have traded Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks, and in return, they have received Spencer Dinwiddie, who's coming back after a couple of years being away from the team. He's now coming back to the Nets. Also bringing in Dorian Finney-Smith, a good small forward slash power forward combo guard or combo forward. They're also bringing in an unprotected 2029 first round pick, a 2027 second round pick, and a 2029 second round pick. So the Brooklyn Nets essentially traded their superstar player for a guy they know very familiar who could score the basketball and is a little bit better defensively. Also, they acquired a very good defensive player in Dorian Finney-Smith, who has at, po at times been able to score the basketball, but he's more of a defensive guy, if anything. And at the same time, they acquired a couple of more picks. My re first reaction with the job, my first reaction, oh, by the way, this came from Nets Daily. The trade that happened earlier on today will generate two trade exceptions for the Nets. I'll have one of them for $5 million and another one for $1.8 million that they can use at any point in the next year. And a trade also saves Joe Sy $18.8 million in luxury taxes, dropping the bill from $108 to $80 million barring any, any other subsequent moves. So obviously they dropped a lot of that they dropped a lot of that money that happened before. <laughs> but just getting into the trade overall. To me, this move was all about Kyrie Irving pretty much forcing his way out. And he pretty much says he didn't want to be a Brooklyn Net anymore. I mean, I talked about it a little bit earlier on the show with my guys that were on the show earlier. But still, it just seems like Kyrie Irving... After negotiations on a contract extension broke down that he never wanted to be here. And he just wanted to go to a situation where he thought he had a better chance at winning a potential championship. So now you let a guy like Kyrie Irving go. And now Irving is going to be teaming up over there in Dallas with Luka Doncic to form one of the more explosive guard combinations in the NBA in terms of the offensive side of the court. So... Now the question is, what are the Nets going to do to replace his production? And on the season, in 29 games, or I'm sorry, in the season so far with the Brooklyn Nets, <laughs> Kyrie Irving was scoring about 27 points per game during the 2022-2023 season, also getting about 5 rebounds and 5 assists, and he was shooting about 49% from the field. And the 30-year-old guard played overall this year, he played in 40 games this regular season before, obviously, the injury that he had and because of the uh, suspension that he had and the team getting rid of, getting rid of him immediately. <laughs> now, in terms of the guys that the Nets got back, now they get back a very familiar face in Spencer Dinwiddie, who I have a feeling the team never wanted to let go in the first place. Spencer Dinwiddie comes back to the team and essentially is now the starting point guard of the Brooklyn Nets. And Dinwiddie's been actually having a pretty decent season this year too. Not like as good as Kyrie Irving. But Spencer Dinwiddie's had a pretty decent season as well. Spencer Dinwiddie this year, he's scoring about 17.7 points this year during the season. 
So Spencer Dinwiddie is able to put the ball into the basket, so he's scoring about 18 points per game. He's shooting about 46% from the field. He's got about five assists, so the same amount as Durant as uh, Irving, but a, little, a couple of rebounds less than uh, Irving. He has had three rebounds per game, so he's an 18 point scorer. So the scoring doesn't drop off incredibly dramatic. About 10 points, so 10, like nine, 10 points per game, obviously. But Dinwiddie is a guy that can score. And <laughs> Spencer Dinwiddie has also played overall in 53 games so far this season. So he's only missed one game this year. So the Nets are pretty much bringing in Spencer Dinwiddie now for the next 30 plus, 30 plus games. Like around 30, 29, 30 games of the season before we hit the playoffs. And then you bring in a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith. Dorian Finney-Smith is also... Oh, by the way, Spencer Dinwiddie's 29 years old too. Dorian Finney-Smith on the season... Now, he's also 29 years old. Finney Smith right now is averaging 9 points per game with about 5 rebounds and about 2 assists, and he's shooting about 42% from the, from the field. And he's 6'7", 220 pounds. So he's around like a small forward, maybe a, a very small power forward. And so far this year, he's played in 40 games. So he's missed some games overall this season too. Dorian Finney-Smith looks like he's either going to be a guy that's going to start at the small forward position or he's going to be a guy coming off the bench for the Brooklyn Nets because of the talent they already have there. So, now the biggest question with this team. What do they do next? What do they do next? And the other questions. A, what do you do with Ben Simmons and his contract? Is he going to come back from injury? <clears throat> and B, and this is the biggest question, what and how, What is Kevin Durant going to react to this? The Brooklyn Nets have already traded away Kyrie Irving. So the question is, what are what is Kevin Durant going to think about this trade? What is, what is Kevin Durant going to think? Is he going to think now that this team doesn't have a chance to win an NBA championship? And right now, they probably don't. But at the same time, maybe Kevin Durant was behind Kyrie Irving being traded. Shout out to NYG22 AK on Popular Opinion Sports that mentioned that. Maybe he was behind this trade. Maybe Kevin Durant was fed up with Kyrie Irving and his stuff that he had going on. But maybe he didn't. Maybe Kevin Durant is not happy now the fact that Kyrie Irving is no longer a Brooklyn Net. And he's the only superstar left. And there's already been teams that have been looking around at potentially trading for Kevin Durant. The Phoenix Suns are already putting together a trade package to, for Kevin Durant if he does become available before the trade deadline this offseason. <laughs> so, the question right now is... What is Kevin Durant going to do? What is he going to say? And what is he going to do? The difference between Durant and Irving are, Irving was a free agent after this year, so then he could have put pressure on the Nets to make a trade because he could have walked after this season and the Nets couldn't do anything about it. Kevin Durant can't do that. He signed a contract extension with this organization back in 2020, 2021, 2022. So he can't go anywhere. Even if he wanted to, tr to leave the Nets, Nets don't have to trade him. They don't have to trade Kevin Durant if they don't want to because he's locked into a deal. So he could essentially, if he wants, hold out if the Nets don't want to, if he decides to want to request a trade. So now the question is are there more trades on the horizon too? And what is Kevin Durant going to think about this? In some ways, I think the Nets, obviously offensively, they got worse. But defensively, I think they got better. As great as we all laud Kyrie Irving, and the offensive production is going to be a loss for the Nets. You can't replace 28 points per game with somebody as talented as Kyrie Irving. You just can't do it. But defensively, Kyrie Irving was nothing to write home about. And now, essentially, you just picked up a very good 
and good mo- defensive-minded small forward in Dorian Finney-Smith and a better defensive guard who can score from the point guard position. Maybe not as much as maybe not as much as Kyrie Irving can, but Dinwiddie can put the ball in the basket. So now the Nets got better defensively. Offensively, they got weaker, but defensively, they got better. And now they might be able to run a little bit more of a fast break offense with this team and not essentially play all ISO ball. And also, you have now the chance to unleash, take the chains off and unleash Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas in the last game against the Wizards on Saturday, or Friday night, he went out there and he scored 44 points. We all know that that kid has a ton of offensive potential and he has a ton of offensive talent. Is one of the reasons why the Nets decided to trade Irving this quickly is because they saw the potential in Cam Thomas and if they gave this kid an opportunity to go out there and show what he can do, that maybe he could be the missing link to this offense? You got to think about that. You got to think about that. Edmund Sumner, too, 29 points. Now, I know it was against the Wizards, a Wizards team that didn't have Bradley Beal, who was out with injury, I know, and also didn't have Kyle Kuzma for the most part. He got hurt during the game, and he missed most of the game, too. But still, those guys showed some pretty good offensive skills out there on the court. But the question is right now, what what are the Nets going to do now If there are other trades on the horizon, because I think this team is way too guard-heavy now, you bring in Dinwiddie, and you bring in Dorian Finney-Smith. This team has a lot of wing players, and still not a lot of guys down low near the post. You still got Dayron Sharp and Nicholas Claxton, but now you traded away uh, Markeith Morris, who is depth in the front court. So essentially your front court right now is Yuta Watanabe, TJ Warren, Ben Simmons, if he ever can get healthy, Dayron Sharp and Nicholas Claxton. While on the wing, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Royce O'Neal, Patty Mills, Kevin Durant, <laughs> uh, Joe Harris, Edmund Sumner, TJ Warren can play the wings too. Cam Thomas. This team is very, very wing heavy. So are they going to take some of these access wings they have right now on the team? I don't think you could trade Joe Harris now because I believe since he signed a contract extension after last season, he's not he can't be traded now that his contract extension kicked in. So we can't trade Harris right now. But the question is, can will the Nets potentially make a move with one of these abundance of guards and wing players they have right now and trade some of these guys away to get them some more front court help? I think another trade is on the horizon. Another trade or potentially two. I don't expect this team, this team right now as currently constructed, I do not expect this Nets team to be the Nets team that will be playing against the Chicago Bulls or the team fully going into the rest of the offseason, the rest of the NBA season, going into the offseason. I don't expect this to be the Nets team after the trade deadline. I expect at least another move or two to come. They're not done. Because like I said, they need to get some more front court help. And also, got to figure out when Ben Simmons is coming back from injury and what is Kevin Durant thinking. Because Kevin Durant is not happy about this, and he was one of the people that didn't want Kyrie to get traded, and now that Kyrie's gone, is Durant going to ask for a trade next? A lot of teams are monitoring right now what's going to happen with Kevin Durant with the Nets. And if Durant essentially wants to go out there and says, I don't want to be a Net anymore, I want to be traded... I'm, I'm going to request a trade again. Then what do you do if you're the Brooklyn Nets? There's teams out there that can look to get a Kevin Durant in the offseason. But would you wait until the after the season? Play it out with the squad you got right now and whatever moves you make. Try your best when you get into the NBA playoffs and see what happens. But either way right now, my overall reaction is, as much as I like Kyrie Irving as an offensive player and an offensive guy, I'm not happy Kyrie Irving's not here anymore because I really am disappointed the fact that this guy and the Nets couldn't make it work. I looked at a stat earlier. 74 games played over four years between Irving and Durant. 
You can't win if that's the case. Too many injuries between the both of them, vaccine mandates, trade requests, all that kind of stuff. This was a failed experiment for the Brooklyn Nets. Now the question is, what happens next? Kyrie Irving is a maverick. What's going to happen with Kevin Durant? What's going to happen with the rest of this team? Still a lot of questions to be asked. Still a lot of answers to be, still a lot of questions to be answered. We'll find out in the coming days. The NBA trade deadline is this Thursday. I'll be going live for that with my guy Mitch Kofsky and Nick Sh next shift Randy. We'll be talking all NBA trades, all NBA rumors and stuff all day from 10 a.m. beyond to the end of the trade deadline around 3.30, 4 o'clock, and I will be live again at night doing the Bulls and the Nets game. But right now, what is the Nets, mex, Nets mex, next move? What is the Nets next move? What is the Nets next move? Tell me. And what is Kevin Durant's next move? So let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the Kyrie Irving trade to the Dallas Mavericks, along with Markeith Morris. Markeith Morris was also included in the trade, so I can't forget about that too. Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, an unprotected 2029 first-round pick, a 2027 second-round pick, and a 2029 second-round pick. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think. Turn on the bell for notifications. Video or short dropping on the channel. And I hope all you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take it easy. And as always, let's go Brooklyn Nets. It's a Nets world. And we're all just living in it.